Hey, welcome back. As I promised, some more examples. We went into excruciating detail in the last video. Now we'll do less excruciating detail, but we'll still see, and so we'll, that'll give us time to see many more examples. All right, first example. Let's talk about uh, r of t is equal to cosine of t sine of t. This is a great example. All right, so we could go directly to the computer, plug it in. We could plug in some points. Um, I'm going to give us a domain of t between 0 and 2 pi. And I'm going to make us think a little bit about trig before we uh, draw this picture. So let's draw the, let's do it the second way that we talked about before. x of t is, so from 0 to 2 pi, if we have x of t is cosine of t, that starts off here, goes down to one, negative 1, and back up to positive 1. So 1, negative 1 from 0 to 2 pi. Uh, y of t is going to be sine of t. Right, and sine of t does what? It starts off at 0, goes up to 1, comes back down to 0, then goes down to negative 1, goes to positive, goes back to 0. All right, so that's x of t, that's y of t, from 0 to 2 pi. All right, so now we want to combine those two functions into one function. All right, so what I'm going to do here is these the range of x of t and y of t are both from negative 1 to 1. So I'm going to create our thing where this is 1, this is 1, negative 1, 1. All right, so what we're going to do is let's follow what this circle does and see what happens. So let's first think about where we start. So we start where x is 1 and y is 0. So that's this point right here. This is when t is equal to 0. All right, so now as we go from 0 to pi over 2, pi over 2, then x decreases from 1 to 0, decreases from 1 to 0, and y increases from 0 to 1. So we're kind of following in this way. All right, what about from pi over 2 to pi? Well, in this range, from pi over 2 to, to pi, what do we get? We have the values of x go from 0 to negative 1, and the values of y go from 1 to 0. And so that's following in this direction. Oh, let's follow, let's do the next two paths, right? They're going to follow this way, and they're going to follow this way. Hey, wait a minute. That looks like a circle. Yay, a circle. Um, let's graph it on the computer and see if that agrees with us. So uh, we'll go back to the circle. If we do a parametric plot of cosine of t comma sine of t, then t go where t goes from 0 to 2 pi, and we plot it, then it does indeed give us a circle. So is there a good reason why it gives us a circle? Well, let's go down and write these things. So we have x of t is equal to cosine of t, and y of t is equal to sine of t. Well, what do we know about x squared plus y squared? Well, x squared is cosine squared of t, y squared is sine squared of t, and we know that x squared plus y squared, or cosine squared plus sine squared, is always equal to 1. So x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. This is the equation of a circle. Yay! Circles! Circle gets the square. Okay, so um, let's now take this equation and let's play with it. So what happens? We're, we're going to go use the computer to play with this. But what happens if we take 
uh, cosine of t plus h sine of t plus k. What happens if we take uh, a times cosine of t comma b times sine of t? Right, what's, what's happening here? What happens if we add things to the components? What happens if we multiply the components by values? Let's go over to the screen and see what happens. All right, oh, um, first thing I thought it might be good to think about is uh, what happens if we let t change from zero up to two pi? You can really start to see this this behavior. Um, and in some sense, what we should be saying is that t represents the angle of the point in the circle. Uh, and so before we explore, let me write that down. So what we're saying here is that t should be thought of as the angle, the angle from the positive x-axis in this equation. All right, so let's go back and play around with these, these questions that we asked. What happens if we look at cosine of t plus 1, sine of t minus 1? Well, we started off with our unit circle, and now this circle has shifted, right? It's shifted one unit over and one unit down, which corresponds to the coordinates here, uh, plus one, minus one. In fact, if we choose any h and k, we can move this circle, we're using horizontal and vertical trans translations, and that gives it, that moves our circle somewhere else. So for example, if this is h is equal to two and k is equal to one, we've moved the circle two units over and one unit up. And if we wanna move three units over and three units down, to three units to the left and three units down, we can use h as negative three and y is equal to, and, and k is equal to negative 3. Okay, so now we know, what do we know now? Let's go back over to our tablet. What we know is that this first example, this is a translation. And we can see that because this is what? This is cosine of t comma sine of t plus the vector hk. So it's a translation by the vector hk. Hey, there's some vector addition in there that's helping us understand what's happening to these parametric curves. All right, let's look at what's happening here. a cosine of t plus b sine of t. Um, back to our screen. Well, so here's what's happening if we start off with a cosine of t, b sine of t, and we just have a and t, a is equal to one and b is equal to one, we get our circle. But what happens if a becomes two, or a becomes three, or a becomes four? That's doing a horizontal, uh, it's, a, it's doing a horizontal scaling of the circle. And similarly, if we change b, two, three, four, that's doing a vertical scaling of our circle. And so a cosine t b sine of t gives a uh, horizontal scale by a factor of a and a vertical scale by a factor of b. All right, so, oh, you know what? I was writing and I didn't have it on the screen, but this is exactly what I was saying in words. a cosine of t gives a horizontal scaling by a factor of a. Multiplying the y coordinate by b gives a vertical scaling by a factor of b. 
All right, so let's talk about some cool things to try. So there's some cool things to try. Oops, cool things to try. Here, one cool thing to try is to try out changing some the values here. So sine curves that look like this, where you have sine of a t and sine of b t. These are called Lissajous curves. And you can make them sine curves. You can make them cosine curves. All right, we made this a cosine. Let's see what happens there. You get something different. And they make really cool patterns. So play around with that. Um, one of the curves from the book, this, let's see, I didn't write down which this one is. This is from a problem. And as you change the, the C here, you get this elliptic curve-like thing. Um, and as you change this parameter, you get an interesting uh, base here, too. So this is, as you change a parameter, C, C goes from 0 to 20, you get a whole family of different interesting looking curves, and they're called swallowtail catastrophe curves. Um, here's another cool curve parametric plot uh, where we're having cosine of t minus cosine of 10t, sine of t minus sine of 10t. Um, play around with it. Try different things. See what you can do because there's some really cool curves out there. So um, I am posting, remember I'm posting this, um, this uh, notebook. And I'm also going to give you a couple of links. So these are cool things to try. So we have the Lissajous curves. We have some curves uh, and some, some famous curves. And you should go wild try doing a whole bunch of interesting things, uh, try playing around with them, use different functions, see what you can create um, as part of what you'll do for uh, not this class, but the next class. I'd like you to try to explore some of these curves and share your favorite ones that you come up with. All right, uh, I'm going to stop here, but I'm going to do one last thing I'm going to talk about is what happens when we do curves in three dimensions. All right, talk to you soon.